Hey, what's good, man? It's the neighborhood spokesman, DJ Blaze, the hardest working DJ in radio. I'm out here in Wenatchee fucking with one of the Bay Area's hottest MCs, Mr. F. A to the motherfucking B. You gotta say it that way too when you introduce <laughs> this next artist. And, and let me be honest, man, when I first got a, a, a the real glimpse of you a few years back, I can't remember exactly what event it was, but actually you was on stage and you kicked off like I believe what was supposed to be one of the longest freestyles in like hip hop. Where was it at? I don't know, but it was years back, and people actually started really bringing up your name at that point. Like, did you hear this freestyle from Mr. F.A.B.? And tonight, you actually kicked off a freestyle I thought kind of went similar to what people I think were surprised about that night. It was uh, spectacular. You're grabbing optics, you're naming shit, you're picking tags, you're, you're naming fights. And that just bumped right into me. That's the first thing you see, like, dudes are fighting tonight, what's going on? Where does this freestyle energy come from, I guess, is where I'm trying to get to. I don't know, man. Um, it's just it's a, a gift, man. You know what I'm saying? That, uh, that I've cultivated over the years, constantly worked on. Um, it's, it's definitely an asset. Nice. Um, a dope thing to have, man. You know, a lot of MCs when I, when I was coming in the game and the people that I idolized growing up, man, you know, you had to do that. That was some part of your quality that you had to do. Aside from the writing, you had to still have right, the ability to, have to just from be an MC to, on, on, to the watch spot. You know, on spot. Let me hear what you got, what's going on, you know, right there, right then and there. And uh, this is something that, you know, I, I kind of use as, you know, just some showmanship. Just got gotcha. something to add to my showmanship. I feel like as an artist, every artist has to have something that they bring to the show, that they bring to the table. Um, and that's what makes the things, of, the, the difference of different artists, the distinctiveness um, and an ability to uh, distinguish yourself in the game where everyone is like everyone now. And, and I think you uh, you did your homework when you did all that, man, because there ain't a lot of MCs or entertainers that come to the table thinking that way, to be honest. You know, you got a lot of people who don't uh, analyze the game and see what the stage is all about. You know, right. you got some fools that know how to come in with a lot of backup dancers and shit. <laughs> but when it comes to like being the actual show, and that's why people actually came out and paid that dollar. You know, it's just it's just kind of like a stand there, kind of you know, just rap into the mic thing. But tonight, I think you you definitely prove to the people that shit. As long as the stage is and as wide as we can go, front to back, side to side, you're gonna utilize the entire oh, yeah, stage and fucking try to flip it the fuck out, man. I think um. My show is one thing that has given me the longevity that I've been, um, you know, celebrating my tip here in the game. Wow, you know, wow, um, decade. That's 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 good, man. It's, it's good. definitely a blessing, man, to be able to say, man, you know, ten years later, I'm still doing what I love to do, man. City to city, state to state, country to country. Wow, um, wow. And, uh, and 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 getting love, man. After you know, after you get off stage and things like that, that's that's a beautiful thing. But I credit it all. You know, it's accredited to a great live show. An exceptional DJ man who's always had my back. Nice. And we nice. continue to uh, we continue to improve. And when I go home, when I go home tonight, like when I go back to the room, I sit up and I think about what what could I have done to have my show a little bit better. Got you. Uh, at what you know what was my weakest point in the show. And I think more motherfucking artists need to be doing that shit, motherfuckers. Cause some of y'all come up half drunk as shit. And you give these people a half-ass fucking show, man. But I, obviously you're hearing this man turn that shit around and say, hey man, what was my weakest point of the show and how can I come back and create something even bigger and better for those people to talk about? That, that's I've never, good. I've never done the same show. Um, I've never done, like, because me, me and my DJ, one thing about us is uh, cohesiveness is there and, and, and we've never done the same show. Like, I've never, you. I've never done the same set ever in, Got in, you. in, in, in my years of performing. Because we never rehearsed anything. So we never, <laughs> it's all improv. It's on the spot we've never, shit, man. We've never rehearsed for a show. Ever. Dope. Like, and I think it's kind of like radio. You know, you know, I've been in radio a decade myself, man. And, and I noticed that, you know, every day is different. Regardless of how good you did the day before, it's never going to be the same. So it's kind of like on the spot. It's, most, it's mostly on the spot some, most of the time, man. So you can't go in there with a plan, just more of an outline, I guess, to try right. to... Try to uh, uh, just as long people. as you can stay in the, out within, the, within the game plan. Um, and you know the improv. You know we got to be like Peyton Manning, man. You get to that line, and you, you got to score. Well, you got to score. You, you got to get there. So whatever it needs to do to get across that line, and that's what it is with us, man. Whatever it needs to do to continue to have shows booked, continue to be able to drop projects, network with um, with everyone, man. From, Good. You know, from the high, me, I treat the janitor like the president. Nice. You know what I'm nice. You never Stay know. Real humble. And any real thorough, man. Any day the game can be, be reversed. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and, and I think we've been in situations as well where you know the one guy you thought was gonna sit there and chop it up with you doesn't, and the one guy you least expected it does. Right. But we've always talked about the way the game's changing now. It's like 
man, you gotta interact with the fans. You gotta interact with the people. You have to interact with these folks. You gotta give them what they pay for. Cause you know, you be hearing, you know, nothing against Snoop, but he be rolling in two, three hours late sometimes. Rihanna be doing the same thing, you know, two, three times with the fans. I mean, do you feel that? You know, maybe that's taking advantage of the situation a little bit, or is that no, is that no. something in hip hop or in, in, in entertainment that people you know do nowadays to to create this bigger hype? I don't know. No, you know, some days you have uh, great transportation days. <laughs> <laughs> some days you be a little fatigued. You need that extra time. Got you. You know, um, you know, those are great performers. You know, yeah, Charles no, no performer. doubt, no Rihanna's doubt. Great performer, uh, and I think that you know for their tardiness. When they actually do take the stage, they definitely make up for it. There you go. And I think, and, and you know what, man? I think that's the one fucking thing that saved these dudes from, right. you know, getting the, the tomatoes thrown at them right, right. and being like, man, I waited three hours, but they the fucking you know, show they was they fucking worth it. They definitely make up for it. Um, and like I said, man, you know, they're at the top of their game. Most definitely, Snoop Dogg's at the top of his game. You know, and, and like I said, I can't fault anyone because I'm pretty sure that all the negatives I've actually, you know, probably done before. <laughs> so, you know, it is the deal. But I'm, glad, but I'm glad that you're actually willing to talk about it and say, hey, man, these are probably a few of the reasons why that's happening. You know what I'm saying? You never know. You mean, there's an excuse for anything, you know? But we, oh. we live in a, a no-excuse business.